Do you have knee pain that limits your mobility, makes bending difficult, makes walking difficult? Then you are in the right place because we will do three exercises and the chances are very, very high that you will feel better afterwards. We have Joanna with us today. Joanna will ask questions from off screen that you might also ask. So, we're doing the first Liebschambracht exercise on the couch. Very comfortable for you, so you can get into it easily. Don't worry, it won't be difficult. You stretch your leg, sit a little forward on the couch, stretch your leg and pull your foot back a bit and try to be really straight here, as close to the limit as possible. And now you briefly become aware of your back and slowly come forward. You can pull yourself forward on your left leg and then you will feel a stretch in the back, probably in the back of the knee, and it should be just bearable. So you can already go in a bit more so that your body notices something and also orients and implements it. Then you go further and enjoy how it gives in a little more each time. Roland, how do I know if I am far enough in the stretch? That was the voiceover. By the way, off means that she is here but does not appear. It could also be your question. Tell me again, how do I notice? How do I know that I am far enough in the stretch? Ah, that the intensity is right. So the intensity in the back of the knee must be such that you say, it already hurts a little bit, but it is still positive. Then you have exactly the right intensity. And now we're taking it up a notch. And now, try to push your heel into the ground while keeping your knee straight. Then you let go, but when you let go, you still keep your knee straight and fully extended. Then you go a little further forward. When you breathe deeply, it's good because it helps with stretching and you also move slowly. And in between, remind yourself again to pull your forefoot towards your knee as much as possible. And then you notice right away when it pulls a little more below the back of the knee. And everything that pulls and everything that stretches is good. And then you press your heel against the ground again, but keep your knee straight and loosen it again. Then pull your leg back, move it a bit, and now we do the same on the other side. Why should the right leg feel comfortable on its own? The left one wants that too. Stretch it again, pull the forefoot towards the knee, straighten your back and actually keep it in a hollow back, if you know what it is. If not, just keep your back straight. Then go forward, pull yourself a little at the right knee and go into the stretch on the other side and breathe into it. Roland, how long should one actually do this exercise? We take two to two and a half minutes. You can see a clock on the screen and the time when you do it with me is exactly right. You keep going further into the stretch, breathe nicely, pull your forefoot towards you. Adjust it so that it is just barely tolerable and then you also notice that it pulls a little less in between, which means that your tissue, your muscles, your fascia are already giving in. And if it gives in, you may stretch a little more, so lean a little more forward. And now, very carefully, you may also use your hand to help keep your knee extended. Now press your heel a little bit against the ground, because we are now bringing strength into the stretch, and that helps the stretch, and at the same time, it is good for the joint. We know that from experience, then it can be better controlled because you are practicing to control it now. And then you let go again, no longer pressing with the heel against the ground and moving a little further forward into the stretch. And now it goes a bit further after the tension. You also notice that the tension is good for your stretch. 
and then you push against the floor again and let go and go a little further and slowly come out again. Now we have relaxed the entire back of the legs, including the back of the knees. And now we will focus on the front side. Now sit down in a very comfortable position and place your leg on it, calm and a bit relaxed. See how far you can bring your heel towards your buttocks. And there, wherever you reach, you stay and lean your torso back a bit, practically stretching out your groin. Then you'll feel a stretch here across the thigh. You can also hold the foot a little bit and then you continue to stretch and pull your foot, if possible, a little closer. Just note that it is currently still tolerable. Is it more important to stay straight here or to come as close as possible to the buttocks with the foot? You should bring your foot as close to your buttocks as possible. But assuming you only come this far, it's also not a problem. Then you just take this position and overextend yourself here with the torso by simply leaning a little bit over here. That's why the couch is also so well suited. It helps you a lot to find the right position. So that works too and is optimal. Eventually it will be such that you practically have the heel directly at the buttocks. But no matter where you are, breathe in deeply, increase it a little. And now try to straighten your leg during the strength exercise we have incorporated. You try to stretch and then it tightens even more here and the stretching helps again. It's really good for the joint. And then you relax again and go a little further into the stretch. Breathe in nicely, deeply, deeply out. Pull a little further, stretch a little further. If you don't have enough space because of the backrest and you are already close, just go a little sideways. Then you can continue going backwards here and get an even better stretch. And now stretch again. Pretend as if you wanted to push the couch away from under you. Really challenging, exerting strength a bit more, just a bit more. And let go again and go a little further into the stretch and slowly come out again. Come out slowly, especially after such intense stretches, and then you simply turn and we move to the other side. And again, whether here, here, here or here, I go into the position because I can handle it, practice long enough. You must go into hyperextension, lean against the backrest very comfortably. In theory, you could watch TV, listen to music or even read a book. It's just great when you can combine it with other activities, then the exercising time is practically non-existent because you're already doing something else. Roland, what happens if the stretching pain is so strong that I unconsciously hold my breath? then it is too strong. So if you hold your breath or lose the desire to say what you almost wanted to say, then it is too intense because it has to be fun. It's a bit painful, but the pain is still positive. That's why you don't spoil the mood for the exercise, the enjoyment of the exercise, because it's still positively associated, even though it hurts. This is the correct intensity. But if you hold your breath and close your fist tightly, that would be too much. You gradually increase bit by bit and now try pushing your foot back into the couch. So where the stretching is noticeable here, that tightens now, this muscle, it tightens properly and even tighter. Then you relax and notice, okay, now I can go a little further into the stretch. It's great that you can stretch so comfortably, isn't it? I feel like I'm resting and stretching at the same time. That is great. And now again, the foot presses into the couch, presses in properly, you relax again, 
and go a little further into the stretch, a little further. Breathe nicely, move slowly, and then slowly come out. Let me explain you, so that you understand we have worked the entire back of the leg at the beginning, now the entire front of the leg, and the knee is in the middle, it is already a bit freed from the back and the front. But there is the calf, which also runs over the knee joint from here, and we will now address it. We're going to walk towards the wall, and you can either take a few books and stack them up high enough so that your foot is about on top, extend your knee, and move forward. Or you can also use a knee splint, straighten the leg, and then move forward. If you don't have both at hand, then, as I will now show you, you do it without any assistance, you extend the knee, and slowly go into the stretch. And please do not be confused if you already feel a pull here. The more stretched you are, the more you can bring your foot back. Now you go into the stretch and the exercise begins and then you notice it pulls in the upper calf below the knee joint. Always make sure that the knee is nicely extended. If you no longer feel it is extended, on the contrary, it is slightly bent, then you step out of the stretch a bit, make sure that you extend the knee and then go back in and continue stretching. Roland, would you recommend doing the exercise with or without shoes, or is that not important at all? There is actually no difference whether you do it with or without shoes, you just shouldn't wear shoes that go above the ankles. Also, sneakers over the ankles, for example, that would not be good, because then the shoe hinders the stretching in the ankle. But otherwise, much more important, whether with or without shoes, is the fact, do I slide away or do I have a good grip? If you have a floor like this one, which is a wooden floor, bare feet won't slip, which is good. If you wear shoes, then start by pressing with the ball of your foot against the floor. As if you wanted to stand on tiptoe now, and then you notice that the feeling in the upper calf increases, you relax again, straighten your knee, and continue to stretch at the point where you are. And again, you push downwards, want to go on tiptoe, but the wall resists. And it doesn't matter if you're standing on a knee stretcher or on the books. Yes, it would be the same, only there it is more intense due to the pre-stretching, but it also works like this. Release again and go back in again. And now you go out very slowly, wait on the left foot, and we do the same on the left side. Left foot back, the foot must point straight towards the wall. Then you immediately feel this strong tension in the upper calf, and this tension pulls the knee joint space together from below when this muscle contracts too strongly. And that's why the knee is relieved of excessive pressure when you reduce this tension. You go in more and more, knees straightened, foot pointing forward, and you wait until everything gives in nicely. Roland, how should I breathe during these exercises? Do you have a recommendation? Breathing is initially, especially if you are a beginner, done in the way the body takes in air. If you then, when you repeat this routine, which you should do daily, often do, because each time your knee will most likely feel better, then you can slowly also start to feel inside, breathe in, consciously perceive, go in more and more while exhaling. So always hold your position while inhaling and use this opportunity to stretch a little more while exhaling because exhaling relaxes and you can use this relaxation for stretching.
And then you also go here with the left forefoot, you press into the ground. You press into the ground, let go and go further in. Please give feedback when the exercise is done, how you feel about the questions with an invisible voice, so to speak, whether it helps you better understand the exercise. Help us participate and contribute to making the world pain-free by sharing this video. Share it with many people because so many have knee problems and not being able to walk anymore is so unfavorable for health. Therefore, spread it, you are doing a good deed. Relax again, forefoot against the ground, let go again and go a little further into the stretch and then slowly come out again. So now take two or three steps and feel it and enjoy how it feels and let yourself be motivated to do it every day. If you would like another knee routine, please click here above and if you have not subscribed to us yet, which is urgently necessary, please click there. Goodbye, until next time.